Hello and welcome to this week's video. A bit of catching up to do before I get on with this week's project, which is a little box shaped like an apple. Um, more of that later, but before I do that, some catching up with stickers. A thank you to Holly at Turning Prayers. Uh, a thank you to Hugh at Wouldn't It Be Nice. A thank you to Dave at Dave G Designs, sticker and keyring. And a thank you to Kim from Kim Tippin. I will be putting links below um, to any social media, Facebook, YouTube sites that they have. Right, and before I get on, not a sticker, but a t-shirt, Decliner Drexler, um, link below, a YouTube channel. Um, I don't speak German, but you know, watching the video is uh, always a, a joy, joyful experience, an enjoyable experience. And this young man's got a lot of wood turning videos on his, uh, on his channel based in Germany. And I just love the logo. So I treated myself. Right, on with, on with the project teeth in, stomach in. Right, so I'm going to start off with a piece of Norway maple mounted between centres. I'm using ring centres, very nice and forgiving. Um, if the wood catches, it just stops. So using a roughing gouge just to turn it to a cylinder and then I'll clean up the ends with the parting tool, put a couple of spigots on either end um, and then that will be mounted in the chuck and I'll part through well, roughly in the middle. I'm going to make the top from one half and the bottom from the other, and there's enough waste left on either side so that I can use those to make jam chucks. So I used a thin parting tool just to part it most of the way off, and then I'm gonna take it out from the centers and put it in the chuck. Obviously I need to separate the two of them um, permanently, so quick work with a little saw, and here we go making the top. And I'm just hollowing out the inside of the lid first uh, using a 3 8 spindle gouge. I think that's 10 millimeters. Just tidying up inside there now, putting a little uh, rim on the inside which will sit on top of the lid uh, spigot and a little undercut as you saw there before the sanding just so that it'll meet neatly when it sits on the bottom. And now just shaping the outside using a Les Thorne half inch spindle gouge here. And as you can see, to get the curve, as I'm moving to the narrower part of the top of the box, not just rolling the tool over, but also lifting the handle. And uh, that waste bit behind the lid is what's going to be the jam chuck. So just parting off, and what's left behind in the chuck, I'm uh, turning into a jam chuck to put the lid on. Now, um, it looks like I make it fit beautifully, but you'll see when it comes off, um, when I've shaped the top, I did pack it out with a bit of tape just to be sure. In case the lid gets stuck, I'm just drilling a hole through there with a spindle gouge so that I could knock it off from the other side. Although actually I'm putting a hole in the top for the handle, so that wasn't really necessary. So now I'm just trying to blend the shape in. Of course the top of an apple, it goes in a little bit at the top where the stalk goes in. I've switched to a smaller spindle gouge here than the Les Thorne half inch one. And now just putting the little dimple bit in the top. Um, and then I'll drill a hole in there a little later on for the handle. Right, so just doing the final shaping, uh, a little bit of shear scraping as well with the lower wing of the spindle gouge. Might offend spindle turning enthu uh, enthusiasts, aficionados need to do a bit more spindle work really. Well, there we go, there's the hole put through with a 10 millimeter drill bit. And uh, you can see it's quite thin the top. I'm actually going to make a little mini apple for the end of the handle to stick in on the other side of that lid. Sanding sealer and then a fine sand and then a bit of wood wax to um, put a finish on. Going for a very natural soft finish with this piece. Right, so now, uh, same process really for the bottom. So get that chucked up. I'm going to make a spigot on the top for the lid to fit on and I'm just eyeballing where I think the bottom of my apple should be. Probably could have measured it, but um, I don't know. I guess we've all seen enough apples to remember how big they are. So hollowing out, um, initial hollowing out, I'm going to come back and do some more of that and when I've worked on the outer shape a little bit. 
Right, first thing is to get the lid to fit. And I want that to be quite a tight fit because I want to keep the lid on uh, while I'm turning the rest of the apple so I can see that the shape is working out properly. So again, spindle gouge, the Les Thorne half inch spindle gouge, not just rolling it over but lifting the handle as well. I mean you can see how the thumb on the on the handle is moving towards me as I get to the bottom. Need to clear some waste so that I've got room for um, for the gouge to fit in and then back to a bit of shear scraping. Blending those curves in. Although looking very critically at the final apple box I think I could have made that curve a little better. Right, so the outside is done, apart from obviously the bottom, so just finishing off the inside. And I'm using a scraper here just to clean it up, but I am, because it's narrower at the bottom, going to leave it a little thick in the bottom to give it a bit of weight. Sanding and then parting off, and you can guess what comes next. The waste that's left behind in the chuck, that becomes the jam chuck, so that I can turn the bottom of the bottom. That. Uh, only takes a few moments but again it needs to dip in a little bit to um, where the stalk would go in at the bottom of the apple um, but also I want to make it slightly dished so that the box will sit straight anyway and then the last thing obviously when that's done is to blend it in with a bit of sanding sanding sealer cut that back and then a bit of wood wax 22 as the final finish just buffing it up there with a bit of paper and then off that comes. Um, then the next thing I need to move on to is making the stalk. So I've just made sure that I've made the tenon the right size to fit through the hole. There we go. And I think this is about five times real speed at least. I'm making a uh, sort of flared knob shape, which will uh, then go on my disc sander and I'll sand a flat on either side of that, which I didn't actually film. Um, but once it's sanded up and parted off, I took it to the, uh, the disc sander, sanded those flats, and then I put it in a little collet chuck just to hold it, and then using some files, refined the shape, and finished off with some sandpaper. And then, um, would it be one of my boxes if it didn't have some colour on? Mm. Right, so the next thing is to stain the handle. This was, um, I think this was a piece of beach that I used actually. Um, going for a black stain, uh, I know the stalk really should be brown probably, but anyway, I wanted black. And uh, that's a chestnut spirit stain going on. And then it was um, finished off with a bit of sealer and also some wood wax. And here's a little tiny apple that I've made, which is going to go the other side of the knob with the lid between. Uh, um, so it's sandwiched between the two of them. So a bit of super glue. I always like to just make sure the super glue is coming out steadily rather than a great big glob of it. So a bit of super glue in the bottom of the apple and uh, then I'm just going to offer that up to the underside of the of the stalk once it's been put through the lid of course. There we go. So that just clips on there. It's quite a nice snappy fit. Um, which you can't hear because I managed to have two microphones recording this bit and it got rather echoey. Hence the voiceover, which I know some of you prefer anyway. So that's the lid done, handle in, and uh, there's the completed box with uh, grain matching on that bit anyway. And here it is, my little apple box. Um, fun to do. I do like the stalk, even though it's a bit of a sort of cartoon, comic kind of uh, stalk. And then on the inside, there's the little apple on the lid, a bit crudely coloured, but very nice. I do like turning this Norway maple, but um, on both of the bits of Norway maple I've used recently, the textured coloured deep sided bold from last week and this one, look, they do like to split in the bottom. And I can't even blame this one on it being um, being particularly thin as it's rather thick to give it a bit of stability because of the narrow base that it sits on. Oh yes, it was deliberately left thick in the bottom for that particular reason. Um, quite pleased with the shape overall. 
Um, it was buffed as well uh, with the chestnut buffing system before I stuck the stalk in. And on the inside, I've got some hard wax oil, Tretex, a rather matte oil, but um, left a very nice finish, a nice sheen. So there we go. Number, um, is that number four or number five in my box making series? I can't remember. The grain nearly matches up. Um, of course, I did lose a little bit of thickness cutting it in half, so it's not quite lined up along the two dark bits of grain. Um, but uh, I don't know. It'll look nice on the mantelpiece. Until next time, thanks for watching. If you're interested in really learning how to make boxes and want something much more um, from a teaching point of view, Les Thorne's DVD is well worth the money. Um, absolutely superb DVD, plenty of detail covering the whole process. I mean, the videos I'm putting up aren't really tutorials. They're sort of showing you the way I work and make those boxes. But um, if you want something that goes into great detail about how to make boxes, I can highly recommend that perfect Christmas stocking filler. Till next time, thanks for watching. What was that double thumbs up for, you idiot?